you need to sell some of them. You're wasting all your time and money on models. Paint what you have. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 90. Holy shoot. Episode 90 of Model Club TV. My lovely co-host, Scott Johansson. We've done this 90 times, dude. You've done it 90 times. Oh, yeah. You're a couple short. I'm a few short. I've done this 90 times. I can't believe we're going to stop at 100. Yeah, oh. man. Oof. <laughs> Actually, that might be. <laughs> we'll see. I've been. I don't know. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, like, everyone. Like this show. Hit that like button. Subscribe. We have a Discord. Discord is there for everybody. Anytime you want to jump on and do stuff. Um, I apologize for not being around. And I was just looking at my calendar, and I think I am gone for the next six Saturdays. <laughs> That's what it looks like doing stuff. So great. Uh, Redbubble, Teespring links will be down there if you want to buy a t-shirt. And uh, right up front, a live show coming up on March 30th. Do we have time on that? Uh, it'll be 7 o'clock. It's a Saturday. We'll do 7 o'clock our time. 7, 7 o'clock Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, which they always think they're the most important ones, but no. Central is the time zone that matters. And who does anyone care about? East, West Coast, West Coast? Are there, do we have, yeah, we have some West Coast. Yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. Oh, man. So, yeah, live show March 30th, Saturday, because we just got so much going on here in the next couple of weeks. Adepticon's coming up next week, which I'm really excited for. I get to go see Mark from Dirty Down. He'll be there. Remember, if you're going to buy some Dirty Down paint, use our promo code of MCTV over at goblinshut.com. So, how are you, Scott? Great. <laughs> Dirty Down. So, this episode, we're hoping, is going to be a short one. We have uh, What's in the Bin. We recorded a couple weeks ago, and that'll be there. We have no guests this episode, so you're stuck with us. And a really cool thing during the emails... Uh, Pierre, a listener, sent in some pictures of Chiller from, I think, 93. If I got it, I'll read the email when we get there. And I'll throw up a little gallery uh, towards the end, right before the actual gallery, which we got a bunch of cool stuff for the actual gallery, too. So, um, Speaking of throwing up, my dog just passed gas really bad. And I swear to God, I think I can taste it. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Does it taste good? <laughs> Or is it a? Did you ask your mom. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Gold bond. Anyway, <laughs> stay tuned to the end of the episode. The blooper will be a commercial for Gold. <laughs> yeah, apparently. All right. Um, what's new? Anything? We? I mean, yeah, there's a fly over here, huh? <laughs> oh my god! Of course, there's flies in there with your farting dog and. Just you. I got <laughs> my window room. open. So <laughs> that'll do it. So what they do is they see my screen when it gets like in the spring and the fall and I want to open the window. Oh, I do have the screen. I'll spray open. the screen with off so that they don't come to the screen because the real little bugs still get through the screen. So. Uh, okay. Because they're bastards. So I don't open my windows. I seal everything up. Yeah, that's why your house smells like a formaldehyde jar. Oh, that's the bodies. Come on. Uh, Go, ahead. Go ahead. Finish your... No, how else are you? I'm just wondering, like, we got... Uh... Who cares? Who cares how I am? That's actually true. So let's go right into this. Let's uh, do our giveaway. Uh, we also... Oh, real quick. In news and reviews, we have a live unboxing of Stanart's Jaws kit. So I do have to send it back. This is not one that we can give away. This was like one of the prototypes they sent out for us to review and show on the show. So that will be there towards the end of uh, what uh, news and reviews. So we'll see how that goes. I, was, I hope this is the test. I can't drop and break anything. <laughs> There's a lot of... Dude, this is going to be a disaster. I'm so nervous. I can't even like, oh, yeah. Oh my God, I'm already crying. They're going to be so mad at me. Laura, David, if I break anything, I'm sorry. And I haven't dropped the box can I, yet. Can I say something go about ahead. those people? Yeah, go right ahead. So I got a box the other day from them. 
and I didn't know what it was. Does it look like this? Yes. Are you going to open that on the show? Should I? Did I tell you what mine was? Yet? No, you did not tell me what it was. Should we open then, this then live on the show too? Go ahead and open it. Now. Okay. Open it now. So yes. Yes. you can continue saying, and I'll, I'll read what my post-it note says. I just opened the Jaws box today because I didn't want to be tempted before we recorded to look at it or, or anything. So, dear Jason, thank you for always supporting Stan Arts, David, and Laura. That's awesome. Uh, I got a knife. I'm going to use that. Good. Is there things that can break? Not with that knife. <laughs> what a good knife. wonderful wrapping job. It is. It sure. is a good wrap. I wonder if she worked at Hallmark at some point. She's a nurse. You could work at Hallmark when you were like in high school. I worked at Michael's Frame and Pictures. All right. Here we go. Oh, You're don't freak need long hair. I didn't have long hair then. I had, I had blonde and black hair then. Oh, a mug. That's what I need for down here. A nice little mug. Ooh. With a beautiful David Stamp paint job on that frame. That is really nice. I like the lid. Do you see the lid? It, it turns and that, lets Yeah, that is cool. I'll have now, to use that on the so show. So you know, because you know, you never read anything. This is not dishwasher safe. You're right. I don't read it. <laughs> okay. So that's, that's why I'm that. letting you know. It's do I have to wash it first before safe. I use it? Do I have to wash it? I yeah, just... it does say you should wash it first. Mm. Although, okay. for somebody that drinks out of the toilet and everything, <laughs> I, I don't Go ahead and go for it. Th thank you so on much, on. Stan Arts. We love supporting you guys. Thank you for the yes. bug. They're, uh, they, they put out nice products and they're nice. Beautiful people. products, which we're about to see here in a few minutes. So, uh, but first, let's do the giveaway. Last week I did the, or last week, last episode, the giveaway was two kits that I printed. From Ina, from Dick Lick Heart, Dick Dykly Heart. I'm still not sure how to pronounce it, but I know we did give her about, a couple. How about, how about Dykly Chart? There you go. Dykly? Or it could be Dykly Chart. Dykly Art. Yes. It could be Art. That's it. Could be Dykly. Could be Dykly Art. Leek. Like German, like Leek. I don't know. Yeah, is that maybe. a good German impression? Okay, You'd something like, like that. Anyway, her name's Ireland, Ire, Ina, and I think she's in Ireland. Is my is what I think I heard. Mm -hmm. But um, oh great! So she speaks English. Can I hear you butcher her name? That's fantastic. <laughs> if she's watching, I I don't know. Uh, but I Nosferatu, and let me go to web window. Yeah, it works. We have our Nosferatu, and we have the Morticia. Now, the first name I'm going to pull gets to pick between these two. The runner-up gets the one that the person did not want. So the first person's name out of the bin gets to pick. You got a bin again? You gave up the wheel? I have the wheel. Here it goes. Oh, uh, you said the bin. I'm sorry. Wheel of giveaway. There we go. Oh, no. Our thing's cut off. The way oh, that boy. OBS works, <laughs> if I resize, you know how when you have a window pop up and you resize it to make it fit your screen better? If I do that, it changes everything in the program we used to record this. But anyway, I digress. Scott, what tell me when to stop shuffling. Anybody cares. Stop, tell me when to stop shuffling. Stop shuffling. Spinning. And the winner is... Dun, dun, dun. For the Nosferatu Ooh, uh, or the Morticia. <laughs> well, it's user JL7G8YL8L. I think it's a robot some sort of automaton or cyborg. So you are the winner. Send me an email at modelclubtv at gmail.com. And there it is. There's, oh no, that doesn't, that doesn't work on it. I've never tried it on this screen. Huh. All right. Send us an email, modelclubtv at gmail.com. All right. The next name out gets the runner up prize. Tell me when to stop shuffling, Scott. Stop shuffling. I'm so enthused. I love it. And that person is 
Steven Stat names I haven't heard before. Steven Stats five nine one eight. Okay. All right. I hope they live in Fin. They live in <laughs> Finland or something. Siberia, probably, because you know what? We did not say North America only. Dang it. All right. Back to the regular show. So congratulations. Thank you to the Reich Art uh, for those kits. And she was very happy about us giving them away. And I, like I said, I think we did get her a couple subscriptions, so it paid off for her. If neither of these people contact me, we'll be running this again. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to close it. And we're good. All right. Back to the regular show. You ready for news and reviews? All right. First news and reviews. Well, the back of your head's looking really shiny. Hold on, let me. Are you in your nasty bare feet? You can't hear. How much trash did you talk? Are you in your nasty bare feet? Yeah, always. What happens when you step on those? Freaking supports uh, and shit. I'm it's a man. Hurt. It doesn't bother me. My ass, that don't bother you, dude. I'm using the hair dryer. I still cut myself really good the other day. And I'm like, ah. Oh. Okay, so first up for news and reviews is we picked up 10 subscribers from a simple unboxing, which was the surprise unboxing from Just Paint It from Jerry Frayed. And please go watch. I'll put the link down below to their swan kit that's coming out. And I want to have everyone go watch that video if you did not see it. They have an amazing warrior swan kit available, and it's beautiful. And there's an extra crazy base that goes with it. I'll put up some pictures here, but please go look and check out the unboxing video. It's pretty cool. They got a lot of really cool stuff. Comes with a alternate base. Here's that of them standing or swan standing at the front of the. Uh, subway car. Oh so Scott, I made a prediction I, uh, on that. What? Can I see the head? Can I see yes, the because I knew this was coming. Here we go. Ready? Yes, there's the head. That's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my. So, so everyone that's watching, Jason you're gonna start a fight. Are you? Are you ready to start a fight? Are you ready to start a fight? No. Okay. No. no. You're just going to have somebody that agrees with me and somebody that thinks you're an ass. And there's <laughs> nothing unusual about that when it comes to this show. So I molded a piece ahead and it for a gentleman. And the head had hair strands that came down like this. Okay. So my solution to not supporting those, because it's a pain in the ass and they'll break and shit like that. Lazy. I you just it. you just admitted lazy. No, no, it's no, it it's you get better quality on those hair strands. So I flipped it upside down and supported it from the head. For those that three D print will know what I'm talking about. The same as the gentleman that did that. I, I believe Hobby Mike. Yeah, N Y three D creation. NY3D. So um, that's right. He's not Hobby Mike anymore. Anyway, um, and I also figured that any divots that were left from the supports are easier to fix in the hair than maybe on a chin or on a neck or anything like that. So that's why I supported it that way. Um, the gentleman that got the kit agreed with me and said, yeah, that little hole is not a big deal to fix. Okay. However, a certain co-host of mine, has just hold on, hold given on. me endless hold, crap hold, over this. Hold on. Okay. Is it just me? Crap. Was it just me that gave you crap about it? Yes. No. A one no, Jamie Sai was, was the right there next to me giving you no, just Jamie Sai just picked up because he wanted to get a rise out of me. Okay. No. Jamie's a nice gentleman. <laughs> yeah, not as a matter of fact, him. I think he was the first one to say something. I'll throw him right under the bus. <laughs> wow. Uh, but it, the holes in the head, I think can be avoided. I think it's a printing preference. It is not a big deal to fill them. I just think it could be done without doing it. I would have orientated that a different way. 
that's me. That's all I'm saying. I would have worn it the same exact way. I know. That the guy that's been doing it for five years or six, eight years has been doing it. It probably knows more than us put together. Probably. But uh, just probably knows a little more than you do because I did it the way he had done it. So I'm obviously picking up oh. on the process where you're still in the stone age all right jerry send me the stl file i want to test something that's <laughs> <laughs> let's have a printing competition <laughs> let's do that all right so that's awesome so jerry Fraid, check out jerry Fraid's just paint it youtube channel links will be down below pick up that kit from him awesome kit check out the video uh of that unboxing good stuff so up first Yay, it just worked. announced. Just announced today, as we were going live, I'm going to read live the press release, basically. Uh, hey, modelers, are you ready to get small this year? As in small micro-modeling? Well, we are, and we're proud to announce the AFM's all-new Mummy Diorama class. The mummy lives, and you could be the one to bring him to life. Small-scale modeling requires specialized techniques, and this comprehensive class will teach an impressive array of modeling challenges unlike any training seminar before it heading up this innovative class is afm's very own dave prosser an award-winning modeler with over 40 years of modeling excellence in creating lifelike scale figures vignettes and dioramas for this unique class mr prosser aka the professor has personally organized a timed out schedule that'll maximize your micro skills throughout the day and the following approach and applications to build and paint a complete mini model diorama techniques covered and will include working with metallic waxes to define metallic surfaces, wet on wet painting techniques, mixing and blending colors on the model, painting with pastel shade sticks, using alcohol to create surface textures and weathering plug and play light kit, lighting kit to create a flickering. I got to redo that one. <laughs> David Fisher, when, you and your big words, because I know Terry didn't write this. I was going to say what <laughs> comprehensive is when you lost it. I'm just saying after that, it's <laughs> gone downhill. <laughs> Plug and play lighting kit to create a flickering fire effect. <laughs> fire. What? <laughs> Maybe Terry did write this. Listen to this sentence. No. Plug and play lighting kit to create a flickering fire effect in a fire pit. Custom made for just this class. Whew. All right. Now pair that all along with Blackheart's mini mummy diorama as you have the perfect mini what mini. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You're making me laugh. Mini all right. Marmy. All right, let's go. Now pair all of that along with Blackheart's mini mummy diorama. And you have the perfect class for the, an awesome day to start your weekend at Wonderfest 2024. AFM's all day model boot camp will be held on Friday, May 31st between the hours of 9 a.m to 5 p.m. at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Louisville, Kentucky. If you're familiar with AFM's past modeling boot camps, then you know how successful our programs are. Previous class attendees have scheduled great... Previous class attendees have achieved greater coincidence... <laughs> I just put that word in there. It's not even there. I was like, what? <laughs> Previous class attendees have achieved greater confidence in their skills and growing number <laughs> have even won awards with their class modeled efforts. And there's no reason why you can't either. Class tuition fee is 310 per student offered on a limited seating capacity, and it's open to modelers of all skill levels. Apply now to reserve your seat for this amazing opportunity. Now. Apply now to reserve your seat for this amazing opportunity now by contacting AF online, AFM online at amazingfiguremodeler.com. For individual inquiries or phone orders, contact class coordinator Terry J. Webb online or by phone, and I'll have all that contact info below. Thanks Thank for bearing God. with me by reading through that. Oh, man. Woo. I want to say something. Yeah. Um, Dave Prosser is a great painter. Oh, he's a great. It's awesome. And years ago, I bought this little rat fink. And it's actually wait, hold a on. I get to your. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. There you go. Bought this little rat fink from Terry Webb. It's yeah. actually a little model kit that snaps together. Anyway, uh, Terry had a painted one there. It was just beautiful. And it was painted by Dave Prosser. That's I Dave telling me. Yeah, really that sucked. 
because <laughs> it had the little RF on it and everything. So that's awesome. And also, oh, yeah. speaking of Blackheart, I know their class is open as well. Well, that's um, I went today to look at their Facebook page in the web, and I didn't see anything about the class. Where is it? It's on their news in the um. Okay. And I think it's been posted in one of the Wonderfest sites too. Okay. But... So yes, Blackheart has their class. Are there any other classes happening that we know of? Not that I'm aware of yet. I'm sure okay. there's something going on. If something else gets announced between now and then, we will be sure to share it here. Because God forbid anyone should share with us. We suck. <laughs> That's what it boils anyway, down. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Uh web window. Here we are. And dun dun dun. Next, from the Aina, same person we just talked about a little bit ago that did Nosferatu and Morticia, uh, over on her Patreon, Die Clay Shart, <laughs> I don't know how to do it, uh, has this Frankenstein model. I know next month, she, I think the creature from the Black Lagoon won the mm. poll. So it looks like she's kind of going to keep doing some of these classic monsters. Now, I agree completely. It's not a perfect likeness. It is not, like, dead on accurate. But for one of the, it's probably the best printable Frankenstein's monster I've seen so far. I'll give it that. Yeah, I'll give it that. I, I, like, it's, I love the pose that it's just him standing there and it's not. I, you know. I think the problem I have with it. Let's bring it to the expert. Is <laughs> the head being crowned and not flat. Okay. Yeah. I, you know what? Because it's not the likeness isn't. I didn't even notice that until that you far said off. It. I okay. didn't even notice it until you said it. Now I noticed she's also kind of mixing it, like she's got the monster's got the scar on the side of the face from the bride, a Frankenstein type of you know scar. You know I could nitpick it, but I, yeah. I'm not going to because I agree with you for a 3D printed um, piece. Oh, okay. This is one of the best universal monster because i've really only seen there's one on my mini factory that i think is a monster's head like just a small bust and it's Mm -hmm. close too it's not i think this one's better than that one and there's been a couple other ones that i've seen that are just not good so Mm -hmm. i think this is one of the like one of the better ones and it's if you like i already checked it out on the what in the world (laughs) like totally tangled i already checked it out on the build plate and it looks really easy to print the whole kit as it comes fits on a Saturn build plate. So you could just print a yeah. kit in one full, in one quick, just print job. So and if you want to make Bill it Wilson, smaller, it's even bigger. Unless you're, unless you're Bill Wilson and you orient it stupid. <laughs> yeah, Bill, take that. You well, can't interrupt me now, Bill, and talk over me because I'm the boss here. Well, here's what you could do. You could turn the, you could do your normal of printing the head upside down push the head through the build plate, make it flat and re-sculpt the hair. Actually, I could just cut it. Yeah. But anyway, it, no, it's, I like it. It's good. No. It, yeah. And, and again, and, it's a good and, the, and the other nitpick, and I know people are heavy. Oh yeah. You're going to nitpick. I know what you're going to nitpick. The, the neck bolts. And I, yeah. and this, I just learned this last year when in doing Mark's net bolt, I didn't know the neck bolts were different on each side. So these are things that people probably know. If she's not, if she's watching, one of the neck bolts is different than the other. Like it's one of those things. So, and that being said, it's very fixable on this model. Yeah, you just so all snip you have it. to do is sand down the end yeah. of the one. Snip it. And, um, uh, it's really good. I and I really like the stuff she's got coming out. And I'm really thinking about switching over one of my patrons over to so I could sell her stuff at Wonderfest or something. But, um, I really like this piece. It's a nice little piece. So, all right, up next we have, and this was sent in by Chuck Homolka. Again, Chuck sends in cool stuff every once in a while that I miss, and I love when he does it. Uh, this is from Green Stuff World. He, they have a line of busts coming out, and they are one-tenth scale, so they're not huge. They're not tiny. They're a nice bust size, so if you're, like, looking to practice on doing something, uh, this is the first one coming out in Infernal Champion, and then there are... A whole bunch of other ones coming out. So head on over to Green Stuff World and check them out. There's some cool stuff happening. Speaking of busts, I couldn't. I didn't think you noticed. Oh, you got implants? You got your implants? 
No, I had a reduction surgery. <laughs> oh, man. So CA3D, the one Patreon that I am on, that I have the rights to sell things. Man, I got to get that Letterman window shattered. We, we got to talk about that, too. But anyway, go ahead. What, about what? Letterman? The right to sell things. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, from now on, every release they do, they're going to be releasing a bust version of it as well. So... If you see anything, I, there'll be more between now and Wonderfest, but I know for a fact I am going to be bringing those Terminator busts. So if you do want a Terminator bust, I'll have some of those uh, for sale at our table. At I like the Magneto. Yeah, the Magneto I think I'm going to do too. But And we'll see what else comes out between now and then. Uh, but that'll be there. Okay, next. So You want to talk about something else on, first? Okay. Yeah, let, well, before we go into Well, because I know he's next. Um... Jason said he has the right to print these. And so I, I want to be clear. What happens, it's going to happen more in 3D World, okay? And I've preached it with well that, you know, somebody's printing and selling his stuff or resin casting his stuff, and they're not compensating the artist at all, okay? And that sucks, okay? But when someone says they have the right to do it, what happens isn't Patreons. Or certain people, when you buy it, don't care. Or you buy it at a certain price level. Mm -hmm. They give you the right to sell prints. Okay. Now, that could mean that five people at Wonderfest have those same Terminator busts. Yep. Okay. Which I'm because sure they, they do. do. <laughs> okay. But at least the artist has been compensated yeah. for um, what they want. Okay. So, which brings us to our friend Well, who's been... But no, but that also brings me. Someone reached out to me. Someone reached out to me, sent me in a Facebook message. This person is the person we've been trying to get on the show for a very long time, and they keep backing out for some reason. But he asked me if these it rhymes with oh, I know, yeah, I know. Um, and I'm not trying to because these are, these are like easy mistakes to make in the beginning when you first, first start looking for things. And he said, hey, are these websites legit? And right away, I noticed there were pictures from Gambody and other sites that are sort of legit, like they're other people's files. But one of the very easy tells is if they're selling packs of like 3000 STL files for $20 or something, that is usually a very good inclination that that is not legit. No one's going to sell files like that. No one usually has the rights to sell the files. So if you're buying like a pack of STL files, probably all stolen from people's Patreons, and then they just sell the files out in, a, in one big load. Or if it's a link, hey, give us 20 bucks and we'll give you a link to a Google Drive somewhere that has 3,200 STL files, that's usually all stolen stuff. So don't support those people. All right. You ready for well? Let's go. What's well got coming? I know you're excited about this. Ooh, 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 ooh. This is the final piece in the animated Dungeons and Dragons figure diorama. I, not even a diorama, just, you know, all the figures from the cartoon. Uh, and it's perfect. I am so happy he just kept it simple like this. And it's a great backdrop because there's a scene where it comes out of the Tiamat, comes out of the cave like that. And it's perfect backdrop for all of those figures to go behind it. And I think if you lit this, this could be really, really cool. And you know, even his renders have the lighting effect on it too. I mean, it's, I mean, it's he's doing really good stuff. So this is the, the only last thing that concerns me about this, and I don't know how big you're going to print these, man. But um, you may have to get a hold of them to cut some of these pieces down to print them. Probably. I mean, I've I have the files. I haven't looked at it yet. I was kind of waiting. I don't think I will ever print this for someone because it's so extensive. Not this, but the whole big thing. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, You're going to print it for you? I am going to print it for me at some point. I did this. If people are wondering, if you go back and look at the AFM cover I did with the dragon, I forget what issue number it is. It, that is a version of Tiamat. And one of my problems with Tiamat as a dragon, this is going to go into nerd land, is that it has all of the chromatic dragon heads on it. It has white, green, blue, black, red. And you get a weird, like, a, even to me, a two-headed dragon looks weird at times. 
like how the necks have to kind of go together. And when you start, start trying to jam five heads onto this weird torso, it looks weird. And then when they're all different colors, like the Hydra from Harryhausen works because it's all the same color kind of head. This, you have to blend blue into red. You have to bend, blend white into red. And it just, so I'm glad all of that's kind of hidden and you just see the heads popping through the cave. Um, great stuff. I wonder if your mom could take five more. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's two in 20 minutes. What the hell, dude? <laughs> All right. So hey, this, well, this next one. You're ready to give up. Okay. I'm not, no, I'm never giving up. I, I, and again, I was telling you, my mom was showing her, <laughs> her friends, her uh, live great. appearance the other day. Hopefully they're not church friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, no, they're not church friends. Uh, you're excited about this one, Scott. Yes, our good friends over at Stan Arts, Dave and Laura Stan, are going to put out this version of the 1933 stop motion armature from King Kong. Now, I like this for a lot of reasons. Okay, first of all, it is based on the 24 inch armature that they found, not the 18 inch armature that Bob Burns owned. Okay, so there was a 24-inch armature, and that was missing fingers and stuff like that, which apparently Dave's going to sculpt just how it is. Um, I did ask if it was going to be posable, and if it's not going to be posable, it is at least going to be in a classic pose of some sort. And um, this will be a nice companion piece next to the uh, Sideshow one. And the sideshow armature is beautiful, except it doesn't hold a pose because it, it was made with such cheap metal that when you tighten the screws, I've seen guys take the, so you see where those forearms are and you've got yeah. those two pieces. I've seen guys take their sideshow to tighten it because what happens when you tighten those, it tightens on those ball joints, right? When you tighten those, I've seen guys tighten those to the point where those are doing this. Uh, yeah. And the sideshow one. So, and and you could strip those out real easy. They're really little screws. Do you own the sideshow one? I do own the sideshow one, number six. Um, but I, I believe what I would do with my sideshow one is, yeah, I would tighten it to kind of hold the, the pose, which you can do. But I think I would probably put a lot of clear rods under it just to, so it yeah. holds the pose and, and keep it like that. Yeah. Um, but it's still a nice piece. I'm glad I own it. So, but, cool. yeah. Well, that's exciting. This should be. Cool. I love that they be. he does these like really hard things <laughs> to make. All right. So I'm gonna live on the show throw out a suggestion to him. Okay. Okay. So I don't. Does know he if have this to is... pay you for this, or like, are you gonna? Mm -hmm. can, if he does do it, are you gonna, gonna constantly badger him and say that it was your idea? Yes. Okay. Um, I would go with the base. I would kind of give it an art deco feel. Kind of like, and the sideshow thing was kind of art deco feeling, if I'm not mistaken. But just because that was the era that it was from, yeah. it would be kind of cool. So That would um, be cool. But uh, just a suggestion, he's the artist, you know. it's uh, An art deco base would be nice. Okay. All right. You ready? You ready. I don't know how this is going to go. So I'm going to read, I'm going to put up pictures first description. Here we go. Uh, this is directly from Stan Arts. Our first Jaws kit features Bruce, the mechanical shark, as he appeared during the making of the 1975 classic by Steven Spielberg. This highly detailed replica measures 19.5 inches long by 9.5 inches high and consists of 21 parts. You get the head, the tail, the whole damn thing. The kit is entirely 3D printed, but the parts are very thick. The larger parts parts have some real weight to them. This feels very much like a cast kit. The complete model weighs approximately 2.5 pounds. For those that's 19 and a half inches, jeez, you've never seen that before. That's for sure. Uh, no, 2.5 is um. <laughs> <Anyway. laughs> 2.5 is also two and a half for those following at home. The heavy two-part base gives the Bruce gives Bruce a stable platform in which to be mounted to. The sculpted water is a solid chunk of resin. 
The two clear acrylic rods included are used in conjunction with the, let me get some more of these parts here, pictures. Here's all the parts. Uh, two acrylic rods are used in conjunction with the crane to form a stable tripod. Don't worry, it's not as complex as it looks. We did our best to try and simplify the overall design and to minimize the total number of pieces. A set of fully illustrated instructions will be included with each kit and should make assembly pretty straightforward. We worked really hard to make this and we think it's the best kit we have ever produced. We sincerely hope that you enjoy building and painting it. We can't wait to see all of your builds, so please share your pics with us on Facebook or contact us over on the Stan Arts website. All that information will be down below. Here's a couple other pics. Are you ready for a debacle? Let's see how this goes. All right, the price, Scott is what you just got the updated price because i think i have an old email well looking at their website it says 199 dollars. okay and i think there was a post that it was originally 245 yeah i think i have the original the price, price to 199 um check with them don't take our word 100 percent. check with them and um and um let's, let's be sure what's the wait time you said you saw five to eight weeks i saw Oh my god, I can't. Okay. Oh. All right. Let's see how this goes. This is a big box that comes in. Well, I bet it's a the... box. Yeah. There's the box. All right. Pretty, pretty big. There's a hole in it too. Not good. Um. The shark's eating its way out. <laughs> Turn on a light. And now, was there talk cam. they were going to offer this in a smaller size too, or no? They, I think they decided to only do one. Okay. For now. Overhead cam. Got it. That's good enough. We'll go. We'll, we'll do that. Okay. So unboxing. Now, please, Jason, don't break anything. Oh, you know what? I'll bet there's, there's paperwork in here. I'll bet the, the price on it. Oh, no, that's shipping. Send it back. This has to go back to them. So it has a mailer. That has another mailer, bubble mailer. You see what that mailer says on it? It says fragile. Okay. <laughs> it says fragile. Uh, this one's kind of heavy. Another bubble mailer. Another bubble wrapped piece. And this is the heaviest part, so I'm assuming this is the base. Another bubble mailer. Okay. That's everything in the box. I think we'll start with the paperwork. Do this. Okay. So paperwork. Thank you for your purchase. We worked really hard to create this kit and we think it's our best one to date. It's kind of repeat. Let me go. I'm just going to, Scott can't see it, everything right now, but you get an amazing like there's, geez, how many pages? No page numbers, but there's a lot. I'm just going to thumb through this real quick. Well, you get your so part list. Five, you couldn't count. Yeah, no, it's more than five. You get your. I know, that's your, why you couldn't count. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Part list. Uh, attaching servo bank to Bruce's frame. Like, Scott, can you see that? That's a lot of stuff. That's oh, my. This is a model kit, everybody. This is great. Look, look, like the detail in this, the pin slotted bar. Scott, check that out. Like tons of stuff. So you get a really nice set of very detailed. And this is not just a quick, like, oh, this is, this is your instruction sheet. This is an instruction book, which I think is awesome. It shows you how to align everything, how to put the rods in. So well done. Kudos, everybody, on making this. This is actually a work of art too. Man, completed model. That's what it kind of looks like. Beautiful instruction book you get. So I have not messed that up yet. All right. We're going to do this piece first. This is the heaviest. So I'm assuming it's the base. It's the base. Yes. So I'm going to start with that. And then I'm going to, man. So Scott, do you have a suggestion on how to open these and then have the ability to send these back 
Yes. How's that? Well, I, I don't know what you're doing right there isn't going to <laughs> Sorry, guys. So, that's not how I would have done it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm not cutting. So, so I'll, question. Send you, I'll get you some new ones. All right, go ahead. Prepare these. Oh, scissors? What are those? I would just cut the top, and then when you put it all back in, you could have just sealed the top with clear tape. Oh. All right, here's the base. I'm not only the solid. talent, I'm the brain. Solid, solid bases. Nice, chunky feel to it. There's Scott, so you can see. I'll watch it. Okay. So we got that. Has a really good nameplate. Doo -doo. There we go. Doo -doo. Perfect. Okay. So we have that. Which one's next? Ugh. This is nerve wracking. I want you to just rip it open again so that I'm going to be, I have a feeling I'm going to be sending those flying and you're going to be sending them money. for the <laughs> I, have, I was going to say, I think I have a feeling I'm going to be sending $200 to the stands to replace the broken parts. Okay. Got the shark body. Oh, and it came with the piece stuffed inside in some foam. So that's nice to have. I think, yeah, there's a piece in there. So look at those pins. That's awesome. So you can see my hands. It's pretty big. Put it next to my head. That big. Here is. I'm not even going to attempt to try and piece this all together, but just so you get an idea, here's some of the. These are some of the wiring parts, the tubing. Got tubing parts. Okay. Oof. This was a bad idea. <laughs> what was she thinking? I'm going to break something. That's the body. To be able to piece this whole thing together, I don't think is possible. I'm going to rip another envelope. All right, let's see what's in this one. Okay. Well, yeah, hold it up here and dump stuff out. What a great <laughs> idea. Laura, don't send him anything ever again. <laughs> All right. Next. What is this? Oh, this is like the mounting mechanism i think man i just you see this so put that up there again well you've so got you can a... see it well i'll i'll put it there so what are we going to say so again to the detractors of 3d printing try resin casting that in one piece Never mind my burn for my 3D printer. I got a really good burn the other day. Yeah, this is like, I don't know how, you, like, to cast this would be ridiculous. Even printing this isn't that, like, no. Like, yeah, there's some little spots and stuff you're going to have to worry about, but man, the alternative is like making all, like, the Decante style of making all the parts by hand. Like scratch. Dante would make a life size shark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so okay. that's uh, really cool to see. Okay, we got that. What's in this bag? And I'll bag all this up later. Dante, I can't believe you even brought that loser up. <laughs> this wheel. The wheel, wheel on the bus goes round and round. Now, if they wanted to impress me, that wheel would turn. True. Don't tempt him. I think Stan, I think they, they can no, do. no, don't don't even think it. Don't hey, tempt him. That, don't though. tempt look him. At, look at that. <laughs> All right. What else we got in this bag? All right. Another really fragile part. You can see one of the mounting frames. And it's really well printed. It's not So, take a guess. Let's take a guess and maybe they'll tell us. What kind of resin you think he's using because mm -hmm. i've only used one type of resin so i think it's elegoo do you elegoo or anti-cubic is my guess could be wrong hey david tell us we want to know what kind yeah, of i'd like to know what resin he uses my guess is elegoo i forgot when you were here to have you smell the the smell you yeah i know the two <laughs> the the version two of the elegoo standard 
Just so you can see how it doesn't smell like the version one. Oh, this isn't cool. I mean, it's cool, but for me, <laughs> not so much. Parts. 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 Those are the parts. Okay. Oof. Shark tail. Let's put this up. Actually, let me get the body back out. We got the body. Shark tail. Fits together really nicely. Boom. So you're looking at, here's the shark next to me. Let me get the, just me. You can kind of see. Here's the body. There's the body. Wings. There's a shark body, shark tail. And look at those, that, that ribbing there. One of them's a little broke. That's not me. So this is something they're going to have to be careful with. Maybe this was a shipping test. Now that one is uh, broke. So you'd have to put a little drop of glue on there. Should be fine. Or some UV resin. We'll fix it right up. I'll do that before I send it back. You were nice. You'd send it back to him and fix it. Yeah. That's what I think I'm going to do. Okay. Good. And then. Yeah, that's. That's the thing about this. It's going to be. You're going to have a hard time shipping it, I think. We got mouth parts, I think, for the shark is my guess. Okay. Here we have a shark head. Yeah. Bits of... Oh. Cool. Shark head. Then we have, dude, I don't even know. Man. This is a kit. <laughs> I think you can say that. So you have your acrylic rods for holding it up. You have fins, more fins. So if you wanted to build a simple version, you could use the base and the fin. Yeah, I think so. Uh, more parts. This is, look at this piece. That's Jeez. Cool. Yeah, and that's that piece is really nice. Really nice. Here's the teeth parts, the teethuses. So this I'm assuming would go in this teeth. way. Teeth. I don't want to force it in right now and break it, but there's your teeth palette. Teeth are all there. It's really nice. Okay, that's not the other teeth, the bottom. You're trying to it, no, I got the bottom teeth right here. Here's the bottom teeth. Those go here. Plug in really nice. There's the teeth. Oof. Okay, I haven't broken anything yet. And then I have one more bag. This is the one that says fragile. Should I just whip it against the <laughs> Yeah, that's what you should do. And see if their packing helps. I don't like this being here. Okay. Let me... All right, here we go. Don't break it, Jason. Ah, yeah, fragile. <laughs> so this is the holy cow, dude. So that I think maybe where they did how, match. How'd you like to cut the supports off? Of that? Oh my god, what a nightmare! Guy, I, people watching at home, I don't think you understand. The com the oh no, I'm being shot at. <laughs> I don't think you understand the complexity of this and the the amount of like probably tears that have gone into. I wonder if he broke some of these because yeah, cutting supports off this. Oh boy, so it would go in the body. I'm not well. Do I want to do this? 
this how well does it fit i'm sliding it in i want you just jam it in there. oh no yeah. you know what this comes off body comes apart two pieces duh this is why there's instructions oh i don't want to take it well there we go i'm afraid okay good body comes in two pieces so this will pop in there's pegs to make it look kind of like an old model kit too Oh, oh, I think I have it upside down. No, that can't be. There it goes. And there's other pieces, I think, that go. But that goes like that, Scott. See? Yeah, I'd put that top back on and ship it back that way. There's <laughs> nothing protected any better than that. But... Uh, but then the other pieces. Yeah, I think. Man. So that's the Stan Arts Jaws kit, everybody. This is insane yeah, i'm not there looking at it but just the uh that's kind of it kind of gives you an idea what the inside printing is. that went into that is the the engineering skill here is second to none and i and the price if it's indeed 199.95 i, I don't know deal. and how has he not been picked up by a larger company doing this sort of thing Oh, man. Well, Stan Arts, thank you so much for sending this in. I hope everybody kind of enjoyed this live unboxing. I am, I have no idea how I'm going to put this all back together and get it back to him. But, wow. Really cool Slowly, stuff. I, I'm glad they sent it to you and not me. I know. That's <laughs> <laughs> not fair. To, the, to the, cl the clod of the crew. Although I haven't fallen downstairs, so. I didn't fall down the stairs with models. Well, that's not true. I have fallen downstairs in the past, but that was all my fault. It charged. Sure, there was alcohol involved too. There was. There was <laughs> a large amount. A large amount. So, thank you, Stan Arts, for sending that in. I, we we appreciate it. I hope. I hope I did it justice. I'm. I'm just afraid to break something. That's why I'm trying not to. The head is great. I think you have to go from the back. What she said. <laughs> uh. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't. I'll read the directions at some point. I don't want to break anything. I don't want to break a tooth. I don't want to do anything. So that's where we are. Let's uh, go back to normal. Turn this light off. What do you think, Scott? They got a winner? Whew. Yes. Especially if you're a fan, Jaws fan. Yeah. If you're not, I guess. But um, if you're a Jaws freak, that is. That yeah, is this crazy. is. Um, let's go back. Understand. To okay. I don't know how many printers they have. I think they only have two. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back to the, while you're talking, I'm going to put the picture back So, up. you know, these aren't made in a day. Okay. This is a couple of days of printing. A couple of days. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Then you have cleanup and you have curing. So, and I guess, uh, I guess Laura was going to do some of the cleaning and stuff, but then I explained to her that uh, I hope you don't like nail polish because um, <laughs> that's going to go away in a hurry. And uh, yeah, she told me the other day, so I asked how your nails doing. And she said, well, so far David's been doing all the work. So um, yeah, this is doing a, all the cleaning and stuff. So yeah, this is a, this will be a task to take off the printer. like. I don't know, man. I would get these. If you're going to get this, here's my suggestion. If you're going to get this, I would do it now. Because I have a feeling after about 10 of these, they might say, we're not doing this anymore. And I, or the price might go up. The price might go up. So if you want to get in on it at this price now, I would do it quickly. Because I think after removing supports on 30 of these, they might say, we're done. Because that's that's a lot of work and i it's i it's beautifully engineered like it's just gorgeous so please check out stan arts i did give him the hair dryer tip though yeah it does work hair dryers are great for removing support so all right model club tv we're back we are we're at yours scott you got something to show yeah and you know i do this from time to time when i'm looking for stuff or something 
strikes me or comes across my news feed. And this gentleman's name is Stephen Fant. And this came off the Weirdos Model Club. And uh, there's a Weirdos Model Club. I did not even know that. The Weirdos Model Club Facebook group. I'll find a link to that and put it and up. I guess he just joined it. And uh, what he wrote was, thank you for the ad. Here's my commissioned, heavily customized Francis the Fowl kit. The request, the request was to use the Boston Celtics home court and uniform with legendary NBA official Mendy Rudolph and a specified name and number. I incorporated elements from several NBA eras. Apart from those instructions, the only other request was to go nuts. Well, Stephen, you went nuts. Oh, and wow. all I can say is, wow. And, and the reason I'm going to say, wow, if you ever saw this kid out of the box, it's not this nice. Okay. I love the basketball. Uh, huh? I love the basketball. Midair. The, the basketball, we're going we're gonna to get to that in a minute. First of all, we're going to talk about the floor. Okay. Boston has always been famous for their parquet floor. Okay. Um, from when they played in the old Boston Garden to where they play now. Okay. Parquet. The parquet floor was their signature thing. Parquet. So you, you've got that butter. Um, they, Boy, uh, that's a memory. But, that is something I haven't thought about. In like... Legendary uh, owner and head coach, uh, Red Albeck, they've since put his name on the court, and he incorporated that on here. Celtics logo. Um, you know, and then the free throw line and the three point thing. So all of this is is just um amazing. Now I'm gonna go to as <laughs> as you can scroll through some of these pictures. Yeah, I have been. Yeah, keep going. Okay. So go to the close up of his eyes and his uh uniform there. That's all sculpted on there. That kit don't come like that. Okay. The uniform that is. Okay. And then you scroll to the next one and look at the shoes. They're Converse shoes, all stars. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. And now we're going. Chuck, to, are those, no, those aren't. Are those Chuck Taylors? What's a Chuck Taylor? Oh, I don't know. What a Chuck Taylor are there Chucks? I think those are Chucks. They're all stars. They're called Converse all stars. Okay. And then the basketball is an NBA basketball. He's got all yeah. the markings on it and then this is the specific referee he wanted and get knocked over <laughs> mendy and uh i just mendy kind of looks like vin from resin crypt a little bit I, again i don't you know i like the weirdos kits and when guys do stuff like this i just look at these kits and go the potential that these things have you know and I th it's unreal Think so. about the people that we know that are the two people that we know that are really into these Rob and, and um, Phil and they're mm -hmm. two of the more, more creative people we know. And it seems mm -hmm. like these kits lend themselves to that, to doing cool sorts of things um, as a weirdo stuff. Steve's done. Steve. Yeah. Awesome. Steve does a lot with cool them too. Yeah. Things too. Uh, Steve did a uh, R2D2. I think Sideshow had a project called my R2D2. Yeah. And I think Steve did a um, R two D two weirdo, um, if I remember cool. correct. That's awesome. So um, yeah, I, I looked at this and I go, "This is just too awesome not to show." Stephen Steve Fant, hope it's okay. Stephen Fant, um, probably not a viewer, but send him a message. Tell him we showed it. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I love so, it. There you go. Well done, Stephen. Nice, beautiful. All right, where are we? We are at what's in the bin. Boom, here it comes. What's in the bin? What's in the bin? What's in the bin? What's in the bin? What is in this bin? Okay. Hi. Welcome to another what's in the bin box. <laughs> the bin box. <laughs> okay. Yeah, what the hell? So, we don't know what we've shown, what we haven't shown. And why is that? 
because Jason didn't put stickers on them after we were <laughs> <laughs> son of a bitch. Okay. Scott so, was supposed uh, to put stickers on the boxes we were we've already shown. So if we end up with doubles, we'll just put it away. Yeah, what's this? Okay. All right. Let's start with this, because I think we might have shown this. This this might ring a bell, so let's see. We're gonna open this bad boy up. Maybe not. I don't know. This is one of my top ten pieces of all time. No, we didn't show these. This is a Tony McVeigh, and he called it the Gargoyle. And I loved it. I still have the receipt for it somewhere, I think. But I don't know why, I just always loved it. And, um... Then what else did I have in here? Oh, I wonder what that broken piece was. This was... And they all came primed, I wonder why, I don't remember why. But this was the cover of AFM, I'm not sure what number. And this was a Mike Hill um, Curse of the Werewolf bust. And this is one of those pieces that um, the paint job sold me. David Fisher had a really nice paint up of this. Yeah. And um, it's a beautiful sculpt too. And come with a little nameplate or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, came a little That's hollow. I expected to weigh that to weigh a ton, and it doesn't. And this was the first. It's hollow. I want everyone to know too, and I don't know if this is primed or not because if you look at the base, that's not gray resin. But I think this is gray resin, and this was the first gray resin kit I think I saw, honestly. So. And then there's another Ooh, bar. I yeah, let it fall. What's the worst that can happen? And this is another bar that goes like here. So um, this is a Mike Hill piece. It was really nice, so I remember I liked it a lot. I must because I still have it. <laughs> so um, that is what's in that little bin. Two things. I really like this McVeigh one too. Oh, that McVeigh one is, is again, it's, I think it's, I would go so far as to call that one of my favorite pieces. It's got a lot going on in the background, so it keeps, yeah, that's nice. All right. Now, we're going to do something a little different this time. Now, we're going to put shit away as we do it. Let we'll Jason edit it, out. edit it because <laughs> I'm tired of having boxes spewed all over the place. And this, have we done this before? I'm not sure. These are some, this is a little, uh, this is a lot of, what do I got in here anyway? What is all this? Oh, these are, maybe we haven't done this. All right, we'll start off here with this because I have to actually have this out anyway. This is a Mike Parks piece and he didn't produce this for very long but it's a uh, King Kong bust it's got teeth upper teeth I think the lower teeth are molded in and notice the uh, dinosaur in the base here but kind of the art deco style thing here and um, I've never seen this before. Careful, he'll fall off of there. But um, no, Mike didn't have it out there that long. Trying to get a. Oh, there it is. Now he's on there. But um, Mike didn't have it out there that long. I like that. I'm glad you like it because yeah, I've uh, never seen that This might be seeing a uh, reissue soon. Oh. Okay. So. Um, I like this Art Deco base. I do, too. I like the base a lot. That is really cool. And then where your uh, finger is in the back, if you turn it around, there's Mr. Parks MP, Mike Parks. I don't think I can get it in the light. There we go. There we go. That's cool. And then this... Ooh, this is a... Uh, 
It's a little super tiny terror, Nosferatu. Super tiny. Super tiny. And then, of course, we have Super Tiny Terror. Um, I'll take it out. Get that camera off me. Paparazzi. Anyway, this is a Super Tiny Terror King Kong. You can see some of these. The castings are not... Great. Mike was not known for his great castings, but they were workable. So, oops. And then in this bag of bags is, and what's funny is there's one of these on eBay right now. Another super tiny tear. Santa Zilla. Can't even. I have to get in really close. Oh wow! Yeah. There's one of those on eBay right now for an extravagant amount of money, and it just it cracks me up when these guys do this. So I've got. I won't open all these, but I've got a few more. Uh, I've got a. Godzilla that has antlers like a deer. There's another one where he's blowing a fart. And then there's a Mothra. And Godzilla, super tiny terror. So How many of those do you have? That's you, it. This yeah. is it. Okay. Yeah. And and it's uh it's kind of a little Mike Parks box, actually. But um Yeah, they were they were fun, you know, and they were inexpensive and they were like, yeah, let's do one of those. So um, yeah, now this is this is kind of a fun piece, I think. Let's see how this one goes. Hold on, now. bear with me. Another little fun Mike Parks piece. This is just a little set of uh, little pumpkin decorations and stuff he was doing. There we go. Can I turn it? Yeah. Yeah, turn it. We have, of course, the MP on the back. Military police, Mike Parks. Do <laughs> that little fun piece. And then I have another little fun piece here. I'm just going to set this one down. It's kind of all key. This is just Mike just... I think he... Would mess around with stuff? I think he just get stoned and mess yeah. around with stuff. But here's a little dynamite skull. <laughs> That's awesome. That is really cool. So, and then and this wasn't all Mike Park's box. So I'll tell you know why in a minute. This is gonna stay out for a reason. We got here. Oh, we got another one. How many old days when we had a big computer monitor, big ass <laughs> computer monitor? Okay. So this was the Wonderfest mascot. What's in shadow? Hang on. Where's a good? Yeah, it could sit on there. That's a little monitor, buddy. And I don't like to brag, but I'm the one that won the contest to name it. Oh yeah, what's the name? Dimorphodonna. <laughs> Aww. And that was their new mascot. I think Bill Stout designed it. Um, for their 10th anniversary. And, uh, Just real quick. See a little better. Yeah, it sits right on there. Cool. So I think Bill Stout designed the character for their 10th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And when he did that, uh, Wonderfest even produced a little kid of it. Which I have. And then this is, well, she's in all kinds of pieces here, but 
This is Dimorphodonna. I had to buy it because I named yeah. it. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it's... Uh, they should have gave you one. They should have gave me one. Well, what happened is I got my room for free that weekend. Oh, that works. That was the prize. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I got my room for free that weekend, if I remember correctly. Always got an angle. You know, but I won the contest. Don't be jelly. I didn't know there was a contest. No, because that's it. Now this, and I have two of these. I have another one somewhere. But this was actually what I'm going to call a uh, better one. This was casted by the king. And oh I always boy. forget how big this thing is. But, um, I see creature feet. Yeah, you see creature feet. Let's see if I can get this out of here. Cast by the king. Who's the king? Mark Brokaw. Ooh. This is the needful things. Swimming creature. What's in his mouth? <laughs> oh, it looked like fangs for my ankle. <laughs> but it's those gum things. <sighs> yeah, I forget how big this is, too. Until you see it? Yeah. I don't want you to take all of it out. Take no, out like let me take out one of like the hands, hand just to show foot. the hand. Just to can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, its detail is great. And the uh, I'm trying to remember if the fits pretty good too. Yeah. Well, I don't think I have it on right yeah, there. It goes, I think yeah. it goes like that. There you go. Look at that. Almost seamless fit. So, um, yeah, and then the feet, the feet are just flawless. Look at the, every nail is on there. Which means if I handed it to you, you'd drop it on the floor. <laughs> I would. I'm not touching it. <laughs> Especially on concrete. Especially after what you've already done today. I'll save that for another time. Oh, it'll be on tonight's episode. Okay, this I'll have to pack, but that'll pack later. Okay. While we're on the subject of needful things, Dark Carnival. He sent you a cable box? No, I put it in a cable box. These are great boxes. And this is a... Um, uh, this is sculpted by my good friend who doesn't like to do anything small. Tony Cipriano. Ooh. And it was produced by Needful Things. And it's a Conan. That based, is a chunky boy. Based on John Buscema's art. Yeah. Again, another one I always forget how big it is. That's huge. So people... There's my hand right next to it. Yeah, it's huge. Quarter scale? Easily quarter scale, yeah. And... Um, it's... Um, The only problem is, but now because of advances in technology, oh man, his sword uh, takes a beating. Oh, wait, I didn't even have that on. I was looking. Yeah, that's that's a rough sword. But um, at the shield. plate that's also getting thin it's like paper you know and this is resin over time you can heat this up yeah. and straighten it okay now what I would probably do at this point with this is I think I'd get just a piece of sheet plastic and just cut it out yeah or I bet someone has a Conan sword somewhere I can't get it to focus because of the white. Yeah, that's really flimsy. But that's, again, that's how it was. Yep. That's how it was. That's pretty good, even for like some other yeah. stuff. And then I'm not going to pull the base out, but the base is huge. I like this kit, though. I, it is I, nice. I, uh, I like this kit. So, funny story. 
Well, to me anyway. Um, yeah, we'll be the judge of that. Is, uh, I don't believe the sculptor has one. Really? <laughs> Who is the sculptor? Tony uh, Cipriano. Oh, Cipriano. Yeah, Cipriano. Yes. Hey, Tony. <laughs> Ooh. Got some mean going there, huh? Scott has your work. A lot of Tony's work. He's one of my favorites. But surprisingly, I don't have as much of his stuff as you think I would. And this did not come with a subscription to HBO. No. You no HBO it, Max for you? No HBO Max for me. Get in there, you mother. Now, this is more what's in the box this time. We're running out of bins. What's in this box? Let's see. I think I know what's in here. Ooh, and I would be right. This is pretty rare these days. This is uh, another Mike Hill sculpt. Beautifully cast by Mike Allen. Uh, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. It's a two-figure um, one-a scale of the classic pose of the monster choking the wolfman that you always saw basically from here up. And so they did a whole... Uh, I didn't paint that one. I painted the other one where he's like this. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I believe... Oh, that's a nice piece. That is a nice piece. I believe this was sculpted. And guess what? It has the... Hold on. What do I always do? Smell. It has... I smell resin, which is a nice... <laughs> yeah. See, so I always like to see things that are engineered like this. This, this always cracks me up. So I like these, these things that... The arm goes there, that arm goes there, and that arm goes on there. Yeah. And bada-bing, bada boom. But you'd almost have to build it before you painted it. Yeah. Um, it's the monster's head. And here's the wolfman's head getting choked out until the monster loses his head. Let's see. Yeah. Arr! <laughs> Arr! Those are good sculpts. That's a really good wolfman head, too. I believe this was Mike Hill. If it's not, someone correct me. I thought it was. I could be wrong. I think it is. And I think, I want to say, I'm not 100% sure, but I do want to say that I saw one of these um, sell on eBay for like 500 and some bucks. Hmm. Doesn't say who sculpted it. I have to ask Mike. Maybe Mike will come on the show one day. Maybe Mike and Charlie will come on the show one day. That would be grand, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's not like we've asked him before. <laughs> no, maybe we need to reach out. So there we go. Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. A classic. Forbidden Zone right. special. It's two more boxes. Two more boxes. And these are both from our uh, guest a few episodes ago, Mr. John Diaz. And uh, here, let's do this one first. Save that. Always save the best for last. So this, just so you know how much kits have gone up. Okay. This is Terex. And um, I paid $160 for this. <laughs> okay. Now, I got to ask, what would this cost today? This is a chunk of resin here, pal. All solid? Yes. Okay. So Terax was what they call... For those of us who don't know who Terax is, what's, what's a Terax? Terax is a... Um, Herald of Galactus in the comic books. Actually, he started out as a um, 
bad guy. And then Galactus made him a herald. And what the heralds would do, Silver Surfer was a herald. Um, what the heralds would do is that find, is base. Holy find planets for Galactus to devour. So, um, that yeah. is a solid chunk of <laughs> man. And I gotta say, so a while back when I had this out, it was leeching a little bit. Oh, it still is here a little bit, but I didn't treat this. Okay. It's going to feel a little sticky part here. Not a bad repair to Dremel out. But uh, what I did to that, because, okay, now feel the one that's on this side. You don't feel it sticky. Yeah, it's a little bit. Okay, but that one you feel. So, um, yeah. anyway, uh, if you ever have this problem, you see the burn marks on here? Open flame. Cigarette lighter. Really? And it'll help it a little bit. What if you took a butane torch? Might be a little much. <laughs> okay. But anyway. No such thing as when it comes to fire, a little much. Yeah, no. Um, so the story on this is um, this got... Uh, it was sculpted by Helder, I believe. And uh, feel this thing. This is not hollow. Okay, when well, I'm saying yeah. 160 bucks. Yeah, that is a solid chunk of, of, of stuff. Resin there. greatness. Yeah. Now, dumb question are the holes supposed to be there? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that was his uh, texture. Okay. And I'm just giving you an idea. Great fit on this kit by the way. I, I don't remember how it went. I think he went like that. Yeah, he went like that, so. That's huge. All solid. Yeah, that would cost easily 300 I would think, these days. Where's his head? So, and this is what I really liked about this. This is one of the first ones ever. Which head do you want to use? I don't know. Now the Bowen only comes with one head. I think they 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 did something to the Bowen. They changed the Bowen one a little bit, but this was the base sculpture they had. That's kind of cool to have two heads. And it would be real easy to put a magnet. Yeah, in and have, a magnet. Yep. Okay. Um, I mean, look at the arms. They're like, you know, must go here. No, where's that arm go? Well, that can't be right. But that can't be right either. So that's got to be the arm. Yeah, that's going to be the arm. It's rare to feel something like that. And then look at look at just how well everything fit. Yeah. Beautifully engineered. And then this... Uh, no, this went like... Uh, it's back, I believe. One of them went as back. There's two of them, I think. Okay, so you can probably hear my knees crackle in the video. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, okay. So I think it goes like this because his legs are yeah. up. And then there's one in the back, too. Yeah, cool. And then the axe, which has not warped. And nice key in it. I love the detail in the axle. Yeah. That's Terax. Terax the Untamed, or whatever his name was. There he was. I always thought it was a cool looking character. Terax yeah, was he is a, a cool looking, a cool looking character. character. He looks dark sidey, or is that just me? He might. He very, very possibly could. But you felt that base. Yeah. Okay, that is a hefty piece of fucking <laughs> resin yeah. there, pal. So, um, the nice thing about these hefty pieces of resin 
And you don't have to worry about them too much when you're packing them. This one's got a little point on it that you just kind of can stick in there in the side. And everything else, you just kind of pile it in. Let's say, well, I don't think I can hurt it. Someone ever breaks into my house, I'm going after him with the Terax. <laughs> the, the Terax. So that was Terax. Let me move this. I'll put that in Terax. 160 bucks. Now this is one. Every once in a while when I'm going through my list, I said, yeah, maybe I should sell this one. Then I open it up. Now I have casting number nine. And it had a uh, signed little print by uh, Mr. Mark Van Tine, the sculptor. And again, another chunky monkey. Yeah. So this is the one that came out and you were like, oh, crap. Yes. It was like, oh, yeah. my God, it's almost the same pose as mine. Okay. And, um, get out here. Whoopsie. Drop stuff. Drop some more stuff. That's it. So, I want to thank John Diaz for making me have to carve those out of there someday. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's rough. But they work. They're clean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, it's just a question of... Getting in there, but oh man, that's a chunk of resin to see the grind off. This is a nice touch. Yep. This little rock that goes on there with the nameplate. If you don't want a nameplate, yeah, you leave it off. Um, you know, and again, nice little. I mean, this bad boy. Basically, uh, goes together nice. Yeah, let's see here. What we got here? There we go. Yeah, that's cool. One of the better King Kongs out there, actually. Yeah. So then when sense. I look at it, I go, I can't sell. What are you thinking? I can't sell that. So, um, yeah. That's it. That's, that's, that's our it. um that's our little segment of what's in the box. Bin. Bin. Well, that was another what's in the bin. Yep. I hope we didn't repeat anything. Yeah, we might have. We're getting to the point where Scott, we we don't Scott never put the stickers on the boxes like he was supposed to. So we knew which ones we to look through. So we're gonna have to start being a little more careful when we do it and go through. And uh we recorded that about two weeks ago, so I'm sitting here right now going, I, yeah, I don't remember what it is. There. Open, so. <laughs> that was what's in the bin. All right. Emails, voicemails, and corrections. Okay, and I want to start with okay. uh, a comment, because you just reminded me, a comment on one of the videos, like one of the unboxing videos I did a while back. Someone said, why don't I ever paint anything? I'm turning into Johansson. I have no time. The reason there's been no painting videos is time. And three episodes a month is getting to be a bit much. And we're trying to maybe, I think we uh, see the, uh, the wonder fest, the episode after wonder fest, I kind of see as our new season. Like I see that as our starting point of the year. And with wonder fest being kind of like our WrestleMania or super bowl and then everything kind of restart. So if we end up doing anything new where we cut an episode out a month or do something to, to be, I would, if we, if it took taking an episode out and I could do a painting video instead, that might be the way to go or do something. Like, and, but we'll see. And if people have their thoughts on that, let me know. But I, it's I getting, thought. it's getting a bit much <laughs> time. I've Just, thought. You what? I have thought. What are your thoughts? Dump, dump blood bank. And then you only got to concentrate on this. All right. So. <laughs> That's true. That is true. All right, we have a correction from Titan Find. And this was in the comments. Natty Ramos is a lady, not a guy. So we saw we're sorry. We did who knows? So 
and it says and Titan Fine says she does and really I great printed, work. Yeah. I just want to know. I just want you to know. In the process of printing for others for Wonderfest, I printed an ant yard bar and I yeah. love it. Really and good? I, yes. Um I have it sitting over here, but I don't feel like Yeah, don't break it. it. <laughs> the ant is and I sent you a video of the ant. The ant is like this big. Yeah. And the whiskers call you know, talk about nervous detaching something. I'm just gonna say thank God for the hair dryer. It showed up just in time. Okay. Perfect. And um it's kinda even in them fine parts, and I don't know if you've ever done this, started twisting them a little bit. Yeah. And and then they just kind of come off, you know, rather than trying to I still them. don't I can't believe you haven't used the hair dryer up until this point. I thought this was coming. No, I was much. nervous today. I tried it and I realized both my Jupiters were running at the same time. And it's all on the same circuit. And I'm like, watch me blow a fuse and the Jupiter stop. <laughs> and I'm going to kill myself. But awesome. uh, no, it worked. I wouldn't do it long term. The other day, the uh, the garbage can, I, I had a, when you 3D print, sometimes you fall behind on certain aspects. And the one aspect I fell behind on was taking supports off of my <laughs> So I spent about an hour, which isn't bad because, frankly, if I didn't use the hair dryer, there's a good chance that um, it would have took me much longer and a lot more cutting my fingers and stuff. Okay, but are, are um, you, you placing bets on your phone? What are you doing? No, I'm showing. I'm, oh, okay. I'm pulling this up and let's see if it shows up. Yeah, we'll show up. Oh, there's your big garbage. That was can. my garbage can full of uh, <laughs> of supports. Um, afterwards, All and right. uh, surprisingly, very little hit the floor compared to, to my last picture I sent after I uh, swept up. So. <laughs> All right, we have an email from Pierre, a listener, and he sent us some pretty cool stuff. So we're going to have a slideshow within emails. So after I read this, be a, a brief slideshow. We'll come right back after that. Uh, hello, Jason. I hope you, Scott, and Brian are doing well. Oh, we, we, have a, we have a viewer on the other show. I am one of your subscribers on YouTube. I really like your channel. I have 26 pictures that I took with a 35 millimeter camera in 1993 at the Chiller Theater Toy Model and Film Expo. May 15th and 16th, 1993 at Rotham Center, New Jersey, Fairleigh Dickinson University, and October 29th, the 31st, 1993 at the Meadowlands Hilton in New Jersey. My YouTube handle is Digital Man. Uh, I will not be able to send all the pictures in one email. He sent me 26 pictures. All right, Pierre, thank you so much. These are pretty cool pics. I'm going to run the gallery here of your photographs. Again, remember... These were 35 millimeters. Like Scott and I used to take at Wonderfest a long time ago with a normal camera. You remember, I'd come back Dude. from Wonderfest. And I'm, first of all, I would have them all transferred to disc because that was new. Yeah. So I would have all my pictures transferred to disc. So that was like, what, 10 bucks? Yeah. <laughs> and I would get them all developed too. Okay. And I'd have like 10 rolls of film. I took pictures of everything. And I uh, did that for a while and then I completely stopped taking pictures. Of I completely anything. stopped too. I have photo albums for like five or six years yeah. of the contest and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden I just said, no, no more. I'm not. Now, doing I'm glad people still take pictures. So then I get to see I, stuff. I am too, but I couldn't do it anymore. And it's like, and I'm glad Buck's site is still yeah. up and you can go back and look at a lot of old pictures. So for those of you who like old pictures, Hey, maybe if you were there, maybe you'll see some of your stuff. Enjoy the pictures, everybody. Real quick, chiller gallery. Thank you, Pierre, for sending these in.
Thanks, Pierre. That was awesome. If anyone else has old show pictures, we could do these, send them in. I'll do a little mini gallery as we go. So thank you. All right. Up next from our, you want to do voicemail? No, let's do this email. We'll come back to the voicemail. Um, okay. Yeah. From Joe Heil. We, uh, he sent us a picture of a t-shirt that he got made from a spike original. So let me read you this email. Hi, Jason and Scott. I hope that all is great with you guys. I thought you might get a kick out of the attached picture that heavy metal spike made for me using my latest Cthulhu Medusa kit bash creation. Look very closely at the faces on the knights around the creature. So here we go. Wait, web window. There we go. Now it's really hard to see, but when you see Joe at Wonderfest, take a check out what it'll say Baradur at the top. And you'll be able to see that in a second. Uh, he'll be wearing this shirt. Tell him you saw it on Model Club TV, but it's got some Wonderfest regulars and some Model Club TV regulars. <laughs> there. Oh man, really cool stuff. Look at, look at Trevor. <laughs> Wait, I haven't seen Trevor. Where's Trevor? He's right behind me. Oh, that's Trevor. Okay, now <laughs> I, I was like, who is that? All right, so Glad who's behind Trevor? Trevor? Scott, me, Joe. Wait, who's behind Trevor? I can't see who's in who's behind uh, Vlad, but Nikki behind you. Is that a robot? Yeah. I guess. Is it Robbie the robot something, but very cool yeah. shirt. Uh, I used this pick to order a custom t-shirt to wear at Wonderfest this year. I hope that you guys are cool with me wearing the shirt that has your faces on it. Absolutely. <laughs> so here's the shirt. There's the shirt. So look for Bear Doer at Wonderfest this year. <laughs> Punch him right in the stomach. Right in the bread basket. Say nice shirt. Get him punk. right in the walker. Get him right, right in the walker. Get in the actually we're right like almost kidney shots. <laughs> you do. Me and you. All right. So that's cool. That's awesome. Go back to the voice. Ready? Ready for the voicemail, Scott? Go. Hello, Jason. This is the Joker. And Harley Quinn. Hi. Anyways, Harley, shut up. I, I just thought I'd talk to you and see how old Scotty's doing since he ignores me most of the time. Anyways, I just kind of irritating. Anyways, I heard the rumor that you are a charity. You like to give your money out like water. Do anybody that has their hand out? Mm -mm -mm. I mean, I wish I could do stuff like that, but I'm rather conservative at the moment. Anyways, I don't know. I I want to go after Scotty, but it, it's not worth it risking my life going to Chicago. The flaming asshole that doesn't stop. Of Chicago. Oh, God. I even Harvey Dent don't want to go down there. I don't know, but... That model club is mm, for you two and other baby boomers that... Love the nostalgia. <laughs> yeah, speaking of nostalgia, where is Jeffy? Mm, he never shows up anymore. What a shame. And paying $80 for four paintbrushes. Oh, darling. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I think... Let's start here. I think he drunk dialed us. The Joker sounded drunk. <laughs> Joker, it's time for some AA, maybe. That wasn't yeah, like, your best. That wasn't your best. <laughs> no, it wasn't his best effort. And, and yeah. Harley Quinn sounded a lot like the Joker. Uh, $80 for paintbrush is, is about, if you're getting Sable, it's about right. So I wouldn't say that's too expensive. But, you know, whatever. That's the Joker, everybody. I think he's been drinking. Scott, comments? No, I uh, not not his best voicemail. No, I I think he was I think he was off the wagon. I really do. You know, I wonder. I think I know who it is. I have a new I have a new guess from Kurt Kraus. 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 I just noticed that the files I tried to send in December didn't work. Phil tried to bust me for entering the contest but not building the kits that I won. But I already had it built, and the one before he tried to call me on it. 
Here's the best photos of the selfie girl for the gallery. I hope CG Blade likes my take. So we gave this kit away a while ago. Kurt won it. It's the uh, selfie girl from CG Blade from uh, Pseudoverse Creations. Uh, what I really like, did you notice what he did with the phone? Yeah. There's he, an actual he, selfie on there. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, I did see that. I hope that's not. It's not one of those real dolls, is it, that he took a picture of? No. He doesn't own one of those? It's the actual no, model that's he, on the phone? He's, cheap. he's not going to buy one of them real dolls. Okay. Oh, okay. But no, those well are, done, man. I'm glad. Those People... are uh, for a special level of weird. <laughs> so there we go. There's the uh, selfie girl. I think that's only the second or third person that's painted something they've won on the show and sent it in. Maybe four. I'll have to keep track, but I think that's where we are. So well done, Kurt. Thanks for sending it in. And Peyton, I'm sure CG Blade appreciates it. And our final email. He comment somewhere. Is he back around? He commented, you? yeah. He called you out for uh, being able to rattle off. You did that without notes. I don't know. Anyway, we have an email yeah. from Dan Garden. Oh, which reminds me. Dang it. Hold, please. I got my rainbow connection kit which is the Jim Henson tribute piece, quarter scale tribute kit, traditional resin cast, 3d printed, beautiful kit. Uh, I'm going to open it up real quick. Show you some of the parts. I unwrapped all of them already. So it'll kit be a number little four. Easier. I see you got. Yes. Number four. So here's Kermy. There's Kermy. Beautiful. I've talked about this a million times. I did film an unboxing, but I did. I think I'm just going to show it here. It's good size. Yeah, it's really nice size. Uh, Dan messaged me about this as it was shipping. He said the caster pre-primed everything, and some of it's starting to flake off a little bit, so I think I am going to have to either strip or reprime. Um, but not a big deal. And there is Henson's body. It's a beautiful piece. It's an am I'm so happy he did something like this. It's a nice, really, really nice size. Was this digitally sculpted, or was this... I think uh... it was. And then mold, and then printed, and then um, and then cast, molded and cast. Yeah. So great kit has a lot of parts. Has a wood base. Brian showed his on an earlier episode, so if we can go back and watch that one too. But I'm so happy to have this, and it's one of the next things I am going to build and paint. Um. So we have the Rainbow Connection. Please check out Sci-Fi Models and stuff. Uh, Dan Garden's a great guy. Great kit. I'm so happy he did this because no one else probably would have taken a chance on something like this. So. Thank you so much for making so much stuff. All right. But Dan emailed me when we were talking back and forth about that kit. And we tried to do this last year, but let's, let's try this again. Hi guys. Been uh, generating some ideas for a future episode for you. I was hoping to come on sometime in May with a sort of pre Wonderfest roundup segment. Mostly because I have a few new kits coming this year and I'd like to announce on the show. This kind of started the wheels turning because I really don't have enough to talk about for the entire show. More importantly, there are a lot of other bigger produ producers that probably want to do the same thing. With that in mind, would you think about having an episode comprising of five to 10 minute guest segments where we could each talk about our Wonderfest plans? This is a great advertising opportunity for everyone. And obviously, it's always fun to check in with y'all. Certainly don't want to invite myself, but it looks like that's what I'm doing thoughts oh also no need to read this on the show unless you really want to i really wanted to because last year we tried to do this and no one <laughs> no one no, no one, one jumped bit. at the opportunity because i thought we did so i went back and asked scott and he confirmed yes we did try that so i told dan the problem is we can barely round up one person to in schedules to get on a show to try and get maybe 20 people in one show in a two-week period, would be impossible. So here's what I'm proposing. If anyone who is at Wonderfest, is a producer, has something for sale at Wonderfest, by May 15th, no, that, no, sorry, by the last, by the April 30th show, if you could send us a five-minute video of anything you're selling, like a little preview of your Wonderfest table, put a little just like, or just you can just be you talking what you're going to have, what's going to be there. If you don't want to show anything and let it be a surprise or give everybody a little hint, 
If you want to shoot a video on your phone, five minutes or less of what you got, maybe 10, don't go over 10, and send it to me at modelclubtv at gmail.com, I will edit all of that together and I will do a Wonderfest preview episode in that first episode in May. And we'll run like a little, like just montage of everyone's videos, of stuff you have coming out, shoot it on your phone, preferably horizontally, not vertically. But if you have to do it vertically, whatever, it doesn't matter. And sometimes, you know, we could turn that into a reel and it would support you even better. So it just totally depends. This is up to you. If we only get one person, I will play that one video. If we get 10, I will do it. So it's up to everyone. It's on you. Wonderfest people. If you're going to Wonderfest and you want to advertise your stuff, send me a video. Got thought? Yes, I agreed. <laughs> Holy cow, write that down. We agreed on something. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the show, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. What's in the bin? Thank you, Stan Arts and uh, the Jaws. I man, still sitting here, and I, I love it. I don't know how I'm going to pack this back. <laughs> Place the mess. Uh, say goodbye, Scott. Oh, we have a good gallery this episode too. Good gallery. Check it out. Stick around. Say goodbye, Scott. Goodbye, Gold Bond. Stay tuned. That'll make sense.
I'm recording this. Wait, you've never used Gold Bond? Not on my nutsack. That's where you're supposed to use Gold Bond. I thought it was a foot thing. No, 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 no. You haven't lived until you've Gold Bonded the undercarriage. Like, from front to back, dude. It's like going on a... (laughs) I don't even know how to explain it. I'm just happy front to back is clean. That, All th- right. This helps. By the way, did you see the commercial for the man wipes? No. There's some commercial and it's talking about man wipes. Okay. Well, I have dude wipes. Dude, maybe they are dude wipes. Okay. Maybe I they are the oh, dude yeah. wipes. Then I have but now we that. have a okay. commercial for it. Okay. But no, you got it. I'm I'm gonna buy you some. Especially oh, for wow. Wonderfest. It works wonders. It's like going on a you know, like the, the, oh, remember like the York peppermint patty commercials? It's like that, but down the gold there. Bond? Are, we, are we talking about the gold bond? Yes. Now or the dude yeah. Bond? The gold bond. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's. No, you know what? I'm going to get you some gold bond. I'm going to empty the tube. I'm going to fill it with. Ben no, not the, po- no the, the powder, the bottle, not the tube. Oh, no. You powder that stuff. And it's like, I, I dude, it's you. all day long. I have to bring it to Wonderfest. No hey. chafing. Everything. It's. Public service announcement. All Wonderfest goers. <laughs> Gold bond the undercarriage before you get out of your hotel room in the morning. Things will be a million times better. And for people that have done Things this, are not that bad for me. Dude, I'm tell- it'll make things a million times better than what they are. I love it. It's great. It's like pixie dust. It's like yes. magic pixie <laughs> yes, nutsack it dust. Dude, it's awesome. Oh, my God. You are a freak. <laughs> All right, can we record this mess now? Oh, I just re- yes. Okay. All right. Jeez. Hello, everyone. Oh, jeez. 